Hey guys, how we doing? Welcome everybody. Back to Indianapolis. Excited to get going. Another year, we just got here last night, so tons of meetings and uh, league meetings this morning. Is this okay? And uh, yeah, here we go. Let it rip. In the same way, every person has the ambition someday to land the big job. You know, he's finishing up his staff. It's a really cool uh, mix of brain power, creativeness, uh, youth, because it's basically a race till April 8th when the players come in. And you know, there's a little bit of a feeling that, you know, behind the eight ball a little bit, so getting caught up. It's, a, it's exciting, but yes, we do need name tags. <laughs> yeah. The Seattle Seahawks joined the National Football League in 1976. Proud legions of Pacific Northwest sports fans flocked to Seattle's new kingdom to see if their newborn team could hold its own in the National Football Conference. So in 2010, when I came for the interview, they brought me in this office and they're like, Oh, you gotta see this office, it's like on the water. And I like called my wife, I'm like, holy cow, babe, if we get this job, it's gonna be awesome. Wait till you see this office, it's ridiculous. Two days later, they flew us back, and Mr. Allen was like, well, the two of you go spend some time together. Pete's like, let's go down to my office. I'm like, cool. So I came down, and he's like, hey, have a seat on my couch, this couch right here. And I sat down, and I was looking around, and I was like, I think this was the office they told me was in my office. Because <laughs> Coach Holmgren and the coaches were at the other end. So then the guy that gave me the tour was like, hey, Coach wanted the water view. He's here first, but you get Coach Holmgren's office and it's huge, it's amazing. <laughs> I was like, hey, whatever, man, happy to be here. No, but uh, yeah, 15 years. So we just decided to kind of like shift everything. We redid the carpet, all that kind of stuff. And then moved in here and then Sarah was like, you should have Ben, uh, my oldest son, you should have Ben, you know, do your wall. I'm like, I don't know if he'd want to do that. So Sarah and Tracy got together, got with Ben, and he was cool with it. And so he came in here for like four hours one afternoon, and like, here it is. It's awesome. Be able to like check it out every day. It's awesome. We live today in an age of science. But the elaborate paraphernalia of the scientist is nothing more than a tool for thinking. It is this that has given us the remarkable achievements of science in modern times. What is this scientific method? You look at it like a year-long research project, and we're always trying to winnow the, the prospects down and figure out who the best fits are, who the best fits, you know, scheme-wise are, and, and from a culture fit. And that's a long, long process we start with thousands of guys, and we, we bring it down to a lot less than that before we choose. Uh, my name is Matt Berry, and I'm the Senior Director of Player Personnel. And for someone who doesn't know what that means, what is Senior Director of Player Personnel? Um, it's a good question. Uh, Matt Berry would be, like, incredibly organized, like, super, you know, incredibly hard worker. A lot of it has to do with the draft, building the draft board, helping uh, Aaron Highline, Trent Kirchner manage the college scouts um, and our, our college scouting process, and then um, being involved in the pro personnel side as well, uh, free agency and, and things like that. It has to have everything like, all the tags need to be perfect. He's like, I, I get it, I get it. It's just like my OCD, like, I, so we give him, yeah, we, he gives himself crowd and we give him crowd about it. The magnet situation, it always cut them square. So we get, and when you have a bunch of magnets together and they're not all the same shape, that creates uh, some problems. And they, they make fun of me because I'm, I'm like, that. like if there's a magnet that's not straight, I'll see it and I'll, I'll have to go up and fix it. But yeah, yeah. it's a lot of magnets and a lot of, a lot of straight lines. 
When, when you get ready for the combine, do you go down with a list of players in mind? Like, I want to see this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, or you position groups, or how do you, how, how do you attack the combine? What's your what's your? Do you have a priority list? Yeah, there's specific guys that I was able to scout in the fall, and then there's guys we just got done with our meetings, our college meetings. So the guys were here for about ten days. It's a wild ride, you know. Oh. It's a long week. It really is. It's, We'd it's, like to go with it, you. It's sometime. probably you should. Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, it'd be fun for you to sit in in the interview. Oh, in the interview man. meetings. If we, it's 15 minutes of like. I think Bob would ask too many questions. Can you talk a bit, a little bit deeper about when you have a new head coach in and you and Pete understanding when your scouts are in there, what a Seattle Seahawk is? Has that changed? Yeah, our experience so far is, is, is really no, Rick, because it's it's a lot of the same, you know, philosophical, you know, similarities that was really smooth in the in the interview process and then through the transition, you know, no walls, no silos, we're in this thing together and, and I think that's probably the biggest the biggest thing we're working on right now. Oh, it's it's awesome to see John in that position. I don't I think a lot of that's been overblown though. You know, like hey, we're all about consensus alignment. And I don't think it was any different, you know, with, with Pete in charge. We're always driving for that. But having John get the recognition and the opportunity is super rewarding. It's, it's awesome to see. You know, he's our leader. He's the guy we, you know, we go to work for, we battle for, we spend long nights on the road for to, to make this team. And of course, we're gonna be excited for him and the opportunity. But it's all about consensus and alignment across the operation. I mean, that's what we're, we're striving for. How can you find the right roads? If you wish to get the most out of your study of the occupations, you must follow some definite plan. The draft's usually the last weekend, the weekend in April, and we'll get going when we get into May on the next year's class. So we've been, we've been going a long time on these players, and especially with, with COVID and extra years and transfers, there's a lot more moving parts you have to keep track of, on, especially on the college side. You've got guys that are staying, more guys staying six years in college and a handful staying seven years. So, and you don't know in the fall which of those guys are going to use that six year of eligibility or seventh year. Um, we don't really have an idea of who's in the class until um, this year it was February 2nd uh, was the opt out day. As a group, we try to have two or three visits. Uh, two or three scouts in every school. Um, and then we get into all-star season, which is is January, the combines in February, and then we go through pro days in March, and we, we're building up to the draft right now. As we speak, we're about four weeks out. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three to camera. <laughs> the magic of television, John Schneider, the Seahawks GM, has teleported himself from sitting next to Mike McDonald, that was like a couple of weeks ago at this point, to our set right now. It's the Insiders. You're a loyal viewer of the show, now you're on it. How does it feel? I am a loyal viewer, one of my very favorite shows. And like you guys know how, the, how this week goes, you're, you're constantly trying to figure out what the landscape's gonna look like, uh, you know, for the off season, whether that's talking to agents, talking to other clubs, and everything like that. So uh, when we get back, you know, we'll have clarity on, you know, wh what kind of alignment we have, uh, you know, with the coaches and, you know, how we feel like our, our off season's gonna be going. You know, like I said, as we come down here and, and, and try to figure out what the landscape's going to look like, you know, for the off season, I would say, you know, uh, and this is not an arrogant thing at all, but the standard is our standard, and and it was, you know, we underachieved this year, and it didn't, you know, it didn't, it didn't feel great. Wow. You know, it's not just the the college part, right? The first couple of days I'm there is is we're there is I'm involved with a lot of like league meeting stuff, uh, you know. Uh, just different committees that I'm on, and then league stuff, uh, competition committee stuff. Uh, then we, you know, we're spending a lot of time with, you know, our own yeah. players, agents, and we basically meet with every agency, and you know, I try to get with every team and figure out where they are. It's like this huge landscape uh, as we as we turn the corner and get ready for, uh, you know, the start of free agency that that following uh, weekend. And we just have the conversation. We get to know the guys. We get to know their background. It's the first of many conversations we'll have with those prospects leading up to the draft and trying to figure out who they are, if they're a culture fit, uh, getting to know them, how we can support them, how we can help them transition to our program so that they can be successful Seahawks. How's it going, man? Really good. Um, I've enjoyed being out here, you know, 
Call my supply or something. I've been looking forward to my whole life. What's up, man? How are you doing? All right. Nice to meet you right now. Aaron's gonna take this one away, man. Aaron's gonna lead it. Take us through uh, growing up, just the whole dynamic at home, who raised you, uh, all that good stuff. How much time did they really spend outside of this building and traveling? Having come up from that, um, that background, it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot. Call it 90 days, 90 nights on the road in the fall. Yeah, it's interesting doing what we do because it's, we're so blessed to be in the National Football League. And then when we talk about like never having a finish line, always challenging each other, always like there's no end to this. It's not like, you know, we go home and just turn our phones off, you know? Um, so I think there's like this constant interaction of challenging ideas. We always don't agree with everybody. You know, everybody doesn't approve of, you know, the way people react all the time or, but we spend so much time together, especially this time of the year with our draft prep. So you talked about adversity growing up. What was what was the hardest thing that you had to deal with? What was the last fight you were in? What was it about? Got you here, man. Uh, this is our first time speaking to you, so just give us the whole layout, home life, growing up, uh, just your whole journey. The, the guys did a great job. Again, uh, Trent and Matt Berry and. Aaron in those meetings, you know, just we, we, we really streamlined it. We moved we moved at a good pace. And then we come really call it the last week of, first week of February for our meetings and it's it's ten days now. It used to be about twenty. We do seven on Zoom prior to or five on Zoom prior to. And then we go straight to the combine, which is another eight days. And then from the combine some of those guys go directly to pro days. And so the month of March is three or four days a week in schools doing research again. And then we bring them back, you know, three weeks out of the draft and we work all the way through and then you can take a breath. In choosing your life work, there are many things to be considered. First of all, you must know yourself, your strong point, your weakness, your likes and dislikes. We're leaders, we're uh, communicators, problem solvers, psychologists, accountants, evaluators of football players. Obviously, that's kind of how the majority of us started. And then evaluating people and uh, their strengths and weaknesses and how you know the whole operation uh, fits together. Also, being able to just be yourself and like interact and you know that was cool. With, like Pete, I always had that. It's like if you don't know yourself and you can't just be yourself and you can't lead and make quick decisions, so. We ask our guys to develop relationships with these players. And, and part of that is, is getting to know them so they can be their authentic selves so we know how we can help and support them. So but I really like the guy when you saw him in the workout, um, you saw his power, you saw his quickness, he's got some burst to him. You know, this guy's a thick body dude. He can clog up the middle when he wants to. You know, I like, I like the kid overall too. No issues at all with him. You, you really like the guy you like hanging out with. The, the flip side of that is it can create some bias, so we have to fight that in the room as well and stay as objective as we can. You know, from a cultural standpoint, he fits the scheme wise. He's going to fit well in the position room, he fits, he's going to fit well in the locker room. And when you see all those things line up, you get excited. Because when the coach has the same conviction, the scout has the same conviction, and it lines up objectively, usually you're in a good spot. I always constantly do it what's best for the organization, which isn't always what everybody wants to hear, right? So uh, Marty Schott and I were telling me one time, he's like, you know, your, your messaging has to be that, you know, you're not always gonna like what you hear, but you're gonna hear the truth. You're trying to meet guys where they are. You're trying to learn how they evaluate, what they value in the positions in the scheme. And there are a lot of conversations that happen there. And there are a lot of conversations that will happen you know, leading up in the next month that as we dial in and make sure, okay, you, he, the, what they were asking for, the role that we're on the same page. So they're able to focus on uh, what the board looks like. Uh, you know, Aaron Heinlein and Matt, those guys, those guys give, uh, uh, you know, DJ, Armani, Willie, they give them specific positions, like the guys that may not get drafted to focus on. We've been looking at this thing for, 
long time and going over the same stuff over and over. Bring the new stuff, guys. You guys have been out there pro days talking to these guys. Bring some juice, bring some light to it. Give us some context that we've been lacking since you know we, we left meetings and, and the combine, okay? Uh, if there's something you guys want to say, if there's something bugging you on the board, don't leave it unsaid. All right. I think most of our guys and not all of our guys buy into that part of the process and and we're using it as a tool to, to help you know aid our evaluations and make sure that you know what we were seeing on tape matches um, matches you know what what our objective measures are saying and vice versa if there's a guy that's showing up well objectively that we may not like what the tape looks like we go revisit it yeah so that's that's really it and we'll get we'll get rolling uh, with our meetings and going back over the board and seeking alignment on, on prospects and uh, you know where they fit from a scheme standpoint and uh, you know from a cultural you know makeup fit the competitor and you know guys that really love love ball somewhere in this great land there was a chance for you to make a living and lead a happy life Americans have always made their own opportunities it's up to you to make yours